Good Thursday, um, everyone. Today is uh, October 27th. Thanks for joining us today uh, as we have a call today about um, how to access the Nemesis reporting tools with the starting point of you've forgotten your Nemesis password. Um, as you all know, um, we, as being part of a division of critical care within the Department of Pediatrics at the University of Utah, uh, we maintain pretty strict uh, password reset requirements. And so we do require that a password is reset um, every 90 days. However, you may not be accessing the state-specific reporting tools that frequently, uh, which may mean you forget your password. Traditionally, when Passwords are created, I send um, out some information, a, a document that you can reference on what you need to do to reset your password, uh, as well as a link. Uh, but we do have some resources available on the NEMSIS website for that as well. So, And what we've done is literally put that on the primary support page. So of the current website, and of course I'm saying the current website because we have a new website in development which we expect to be released in November. Um, so we'll provide an update on that um, at that point in time. But if one just literally clicks on support, on the left-hand side of the screen, we have some information on Nemsys account, forgot your password. Um, so there's some research reset instructions. So there is a document uh, that was created in September of 2012 um, that you know provides some information. I'm going to go walk through this process um, as well. But what I tried to do with this document was um, let folks what, know what they need to do uh, for this process if they, if they don't recall off the top of their heads, which is understandable. Um, and then there is the actual reset password link. So by clicking on, so this was on the left-hand side of the screen of support below the reset instructions. Um, traditionally, it will open up in a new tab within your browser. So the step-by-step -step process, and I have a test account that, guess what, I happen to need to reset. So, and, and you don't need to know your old password, which is the, one of the nice things. So you've got a, a reset password, so you have to know what your, um, what your account name is. So I have a test account, and so for me that's T. Karin. And then um, we do have this whole CAPTCHA in here. Uh, in this CAPTCHA is, uh, is so that we don't get hacked. Um, you might have multiple emails um, that you've created accounts with over time. Um, so if at some point, and not necessarily within Nemesis, uh, but our system is going to ask you if this is the email, because we associate an email with every account. So our system is recognizing that. And literally what it's going to do here is it's going to send an email, and it will provide a verification code. And so the email looks something like this. So um, so this is, again, who we're getting our accounts from is the Division of Pediatric Critical Care. And you can just take that code, copy it, post it in, hit continue. This is where you now have information on your old password, which you can leave blank, and then you're able to enter your new password. And um, there's a couple of different criteria pieces of information that's um, listed in here and um, you know tells you the age and some um, other things. Within the document, um, the reset document, you'll notice, oh, I guess I don't have it in this one. Um, I have another document that I probably need to post that lists um, some of the additional criteria that is not listed right here. Um, and you'll notice that there's a clock as well on how much time you have to reset your password. Um, but there are some additional criteria. So for example, you have to have an uppercase, a lowercase, um, and then either a number or a special character. Um, so I am going to go ahead and create mine right now. What am I going to have it be?
reset, and it will tell you as you type along whether or not you have um, created it successfully or if it's something you've used in the past. So that's all there is to creating uh, or resetting your password. Pretty simple. You just have to know where to go for it because it hasn't always been clear. So we're hoping that now that it's on this um, support page and we'll have it on a similar support page on the new Nemesis website. Questions on resetting your password? Great. All right. Um, so I'm going to go back to the Nemesis homepage. And I indicated that we are going to go over the, the Nemesis uh, cube today and how to access the Nemesis cube. I hope today I'm going to log in as my traditional self um, as opposed to my test account. Um, so we do have a couple of um, reporting tools. So I want to I want you to notice that currently, you know, we we have this uh, bar across the top of the home page, and you notice that once you get over into the kind of the PDF documents where it says national reports, there's a hyperlink. Now this hyperlink only brings us to the access reports, um, which is our what I'm now kind of calling our informational reports. These are the reports we created in 2007. So holy moly, they're nine years old now. Um, um, and so this is not our cube. To access the cube, it's a few um, it's a few too many steps, and we're working to. Um, expedite that um, so that it isn't as, as hard for you to get there. Uh, but under re reporting tools, reports, there's either national reports or state reports. You can actually access it. It's the same link, so you can actually get there from either one. Um, for the moment, I'm going to go to uh, create a report cube, and then I'm going to come back uh, to report demos. So create a report cube, this is um, our most powerful tool that we have available. Um, the public can access this um, as well as a state. Now you as a state have to log in as yourself. Um, okay, so what I wanted to do was uh, point out on the Create a Report Cube page um, is at the top we talk about the fact that we have a, a, a series of tutorials with regards to the Nemesis Cube uh, because, you know, we have and um, I'll reference these uh, materials uh, in a second. But so there's two ways that one can get to the tutorial. So this is important for um, if you haven't come back to the cube in a while and you log in and you think, all right, I know there were some more steps I needed to follow. Um, so one can get to that either simply by clicking on this, you know, on, on that link on that page or under Reporting Tools Reports, there's actually a Report Demos uh, section. But in here, we, we have some little tutorial videos that explain how to access the cube. Um, so we have some general report videos, and then we have some state-specific informational videos. Um, the, the difference for these, of course, is that the general report videos are for anybody. Um, who's going to utilize the, the cube, um, the public, for example. Whereas we have state-specific information in the cube uh, that only a state who has a username and account that is associated with a specific state or territory uh, who can access that information. So I'm now going to uh, go back into Reporting Tools Reports, National Reports, Create a Report Cube. Um, so we have a couple things. So if you haven't looked at it in the past, the, um, we have a data dictionary and a list of the elements that are available. For me, the, um, the most important tool for you, if you haven't ever looked at it before, um, is the data dictionary. And I'm going to have this open um, in a separate window just so that um, you know, I can kind of come back to it. Um, we made a, a few updates to this document in a number of years ago. Uh, but and you but you can tell it's a little out of date because we no longer even maintain the calendar year 2013 data. We only have 14, 15, and 16. Um, but what this does is it um, you know has a table of contents. It talks about measures and uh, and provides some information. What's really nice about it is. 
Uh, it explains, uh, for example, um, and I can't, I don't think I can tilt this. I know I can, I just can't remember how. Uh, but sometimes people ask about our time elements and um, the measures that we have for time. So if time is something that you want to take a look at, uh, I actually have this printed out and I have it, you know, in my office. So that when people say, okay, you know, um, average EMS dispatch center time in seconds. Um, so the time elements that we have as national elements, um, what that time frame is, so that one has that um, as a reference. So this is um, this is a good tool. Um, the other thing is a number of years ago, um, NEDARC, which is kind of our sister project here at the Division of Critical Care, um, NEDARC is the National EMS for Children's Data Analysis Resource Center. Um, we held a workshop for the EMSC uh, program managers and introduced them to the Nemesis Cube. Um, so had um, a workshop. Uh, how many of you have been to a NEDARC workshop in the past? Nobody's been to a NEDARC workshop. I, I do recommend that if one is in your area, if you're allowed to travel, um, that you attend. They do a great job. They limit um, the number of attendees to 20 people. Uh, so it does make it a little hard to, um, <laughs> to get to sometimes, uh, but they do a fabulous job um, with all the various things that they do. But in here, they also kind of provide a step-by-step -step, uh, step -step, um, method, and then we've you know, updated this a little bit, but it does walk you through what the process is to access the cube. So this is another resource um, that is available to you that we're going to, again, kind of walk through on how to access the cube. So between the, the tutorial on how to access the cube and, and the first, you know, couple of pages of this document on how to query the, our cube, um, these are some of the resources that uh, I do recommend you at least be aware of. And then there's actual queries where it walks you through um, how to utilize the cube if, if you've never used one before. But I think a lot of you um, have seen something similar in the past. Okay, um, so here is the link to our cube. Uh, so I'm going to click on this link, um, and there is the public username and password. So those of you who uh, have joined today who don't have an account with us, uh, I recommend you just use that public username and password, which is Nemesis Public, and then Nemesis at sign TAC with the N capitalized. I'm going to log in as myself. Um, I have access to all of the states, and apparently I forgot that I changed my password on Monday. So uh, typically what it's going to do is it's going to recognize you up in the right-hand uh, corner with your name. Uh, otherwise, it uh, should show Nemesis public. So typically um, people get to this page, uh, and I'm going to increase this maybe to 125 uh, in hopes that you can see the screen a little better. But sometimes when people get to this page, um, they they also see this report usage, um, but that is not um, anything um, for you guys. To actually access the cube, you have to click into design. Then there's um, two things that pop up in this little window. And you want to click on the um, OLAP report. Then your screen changes. And you have a number of icons that look very similar to an Excel spreadsheet, uh, which is, in essence, what this cube is. Uh, it functions uh, a lot like a pivot table. And then in, the, in what ends up, will end up being the display window, um, you see another icon, um, little table, and you want to click on Connect to Cube. Um, and then what should pop up for you, um, and it's possible something will, uh, this might come open for you. I do recommend that you close it. Uh, it, it can come open with all of these things, which list the various measures uh, that we have in the system. Uh, that isn't important to click into 
um, yet. You just want to click into Nemesis Enhance, so it needs to be red. Um, and then you want to click on OK. You can make it a, a default connection. Um, but if you have a state account and you've logged in using Nemesis Public, then you wouldn't want to make it a default connection. And now is when you're actually in the Nemesis Cube. What you have now is the measures and then what I refer to um, as the folders, and these are what's known as dimensions. Uh, so I call them folders because for the, for the most part they're broken up into sections of the Nemesis version 2 data dictionary. Um, and then at the bottom there are four additional boxes that have to do uh, with your ability to filter and to um, and then to list, in essence, your your rows and your columns. Uh, so typically, we talk about event measures. So EMS responses are um, are event driven, whereas you know if you go to your physician's office, you have a patient care record that follows you over time. Um, so this event measure, if you click on this plus sign, it gives you events uh, and it gives you average EMS times. Um, and then we also have medication measures and procedure, procedure measures. I will come back to that. Uh, within events, if one clicks into the, the square next to count of events, we'll get the total number of records, of which what we have today is 61.5 million. So that's calendar years 13, I'm sorry, not 13, 2015, 2000, and, I can't do my, chronological order here, you guys, 2014, 2015, and year to date, 2016. So everybody follow me so far? Do I need to go back? I kind of went a little slow, but probably a little too fast before checking in. Okay, hearing none, I'm going to continue. Um, I'm just going to real quickly open up um, average EMS times and, and show you that we have uh, average shoot time in minutes. And, and so if I were to uh, pull back, and I'm sorry I can't turn this right now. Um, so what we have is average EMS shoot time. So that's unit notified by dispatch to unit en route, right? So that's the whole paged out or sitting in the vehicle um, and over the air to acknowledgement that you're that you're going in route. Um, so I can actually typically if I click on anything that's a measure, it will automatically populate. It'll show as a measure, but it's also uh, in essence it's displaying in what I would consider the column section. So for example, um, I'm going to add one more. I'm going to add. Um, I am going to add um, average scene response time in minutes. That's also going to populate up here uh, to the right of average shoot times, and it's going to show in this measures section. And then just to, um, to show that, again, the measures typically, we'll see them in measures, but they're kind of showing in what I also would consider the columns. Uh, it's just not displaying in the columns. Um, for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hide that average EMS times subfolder. And what I'm going to do is um, within these other dimensional folders within the uh, Nemesis sections of version 2, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go find the type of service requested. Now, I know that type of service requested um, has to do with um, agency information. You would think it's part of scene information, but it isn't. Uh, so we have a couple of different things as it relates to uh, an ambulance service or, or and the type of call. So I'm going to click on type of service requested. This automatically populates in the type of um, in the row section, and so right now it appears as if it's just to the left of the count of events, average shoot time, and average scene response time in minutes. If I click on the plus sign, 
we'll see the value choices for type of service requested. Now the reason why I wanted to do this um, for now is, is the following reason. I wanted everyone to be able to see that most of the records we have are your traditional 911 response scene times with medical transports being the second largest followed by interfacility. We would expect both interfacility and medical um, transport calls to have one, uh, probably a longer shoot time, which we do see, uh, but definitely a longer scene time because they're, um, especially for, you know, inner facilities um, and a medical transport, you're in a, in a, a medical facility or in a residence or a clinic longer. Um, and we do see that um, a lot. So one of the things that I recommend to folks, if, if they know what type of calls they want to look at, that they start the filter process. So we still have the total number of calls. So again, we were looking at 61.5 million um, that we have year to date. So if we know we, we primarily want to look at um, 911 calls, uh, we can simply filter by looking at 911. Now, sometimes when I'm working on this, I also include intercept and mutual aid, but you'll notice that the counts are actually very small, and so I am going to only choose to filter on 911 response scene. Now, there's a couple of ways that I can choose to do this. Um, I can simply grab um, type of service and pull it down to filters and it'll pull up there. Um, I can deselect um, type of service requested from my display view, and um, I'll tell you why I'm gonna do that in a moment. So we have the filters type of service requested in this uh, lower left-hand box, but you'll notice it also appears above the, uh, dis uh, above the rest of the items that I've listed as measures. There's a single check mark in here. There's a little push pin, um, a binoculars, which is a search icon, um, and options, and then this kind of this blue filter arrow. I'm going to double click on this blue filter arrow, click the plus sign, and a single check mark only means I can uh, select one. So I'm going to choose 911 response scene, and what we're going to see now is that 61.5 million. Uh, dropped to 47.9 uh, million records. And so you're always able to um, take a look at the information uh, of what you've filtered by, by viewing this up here. We can make a decision on whether or not we want to continue to look at um, uh, time elements or the time measures. So I'm going to choose to, to remove those and there's a couple of ways to remove them. We can go back up uh, into the average EMS times and click on the check boxes. So I'm first gonna um, check on the average shoot times and you'll see that it's gone and it's gone from here. Or I can, within this measures box, I can in essence click on it and pull it up right into where it says measures uh, and that's a, in essence a trash um, area for that. So now we just see the total results of the 47.9 for 911 response scene. So right now we're looking at calendar year 2014, 2015, and 2016. I know we don't have a lot of data um, yet for 2016. Um, I'd say we're missing probably up to 30 of the states right now, uh, the states that contribute to us. Uh, so knowing that, I'm going to make a recommendation um, that I filter the data further and we only look at calendar year 2015. So I'm going to open EMS call date and I I know I want to filter, so I am going to kind of grab this, um, or actually I'm going to right click on this. So this is another option is you can find this little section, which is year, quarter, month, day. 
Um, and then later, if we want, we can drill down and look at a quarter or a month if we wanted. But I'm going to right click on this. And for me in this window, I'm currently using Internet Explorer. I see add to rows, add to columns, and add to filters. Do you guys all see that box that uh, popped up down here? I'm going to assume yes, <laughs> and I'm going to click Add to Filters, and that we'll, what we'll see here is that the year, quarter, month, day uh, popped up here to the, uh, at the top. I'm going to put a second check mark, and I actually have to double click that into this box, and I'm going to do that simply because if we want to uh, choose more than one um, quarter at some point in time, that's already done, but you'll notice the view change when there's when there's more than one. I now have uh, boxes, and I can continue to open these up um, and drill down. Um, so that's the other thing is this is a little kind of this pyramid or this tower. Um, anytime you see a pyramid or a tower like this, it means that there's more value choices. Um, beneath it. So it's like opening subfolders and subfolder. Um, so if you notice calendar year 2015, we've got quarter one. Um, then it's going to show the three months that are contained. And obviously, if I continue to click into each of these, it would give uh, each day by day of week. Uh, for now, I'm just going to click on calendar year 2015, say OK, and then our numbers are going to be restricted uh, to 23.4 million. So that's, uh, we had documented 911 response scenes with, uh, for calendar year 2015. And that was out of about 30.2 million. So in the e email notification, excuse me, I'm going to cough real quick. I indicated that um, we, we might want to, okay, now I'm going to have a drink of water. We might want to look at some of the things that are happening in the news, such as naloxone administration. Is uh, anyone on the call interested in, in that naloxone data, or is there something else you'd like to look at? Because right now I'm, I'm still querying based on national data, um, uh, and then I do want to show you how we can do at least you would, as a state, would be able to compare yourself to the nation. Uh, state of Utah, I double-checked with uh, Felicia Alvarez this morning, who said, yep, um, I can display the Utah aggregate data that we have available. Um, so I'll do that in a moment. It, are people interested in looking at some um, naloxone administrations? Okay. Um, so I'm going to collapse this EMS call date back down. Um, and then what I'm going to do is um, I am also going to filter uh, on medication name. So we get a lot of data um, based on, and I get these little pop-up little window things here, so I'm trying to not choose those. So we get um, medications as, as a free text when it comes to NEMSIS. And we have a process by which we, but we have a process by which we transform any free text fields. Now, um, I can tell you that that there's only a handful of states that we get free text on a regular basis. Um, mo a lot of the states have had have identified a coding structure, um, and I'm going to figure out here if, why this window is not opening. Ah, there we go. I see. This is the one I wanted. All right. So now that this is loading, okay, that was my issue before. It was just that it was loading. So we have lots and lots and lots of medications. Um, a lot of these are beyond those that a traditional 911 um, ambulance service would administer. Um, I believe that we're also getting um, what's being submitted as a medication is a patient's home medication or that they're on in, a, in an inter-facility call. Um, so this list is a little overwhelming. Okay, it's a lot overwhelming. <laughs> uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going sc to scroll down um, until I get into the ends here and I'm going to find the lock zone. And, um, so we have naloxone and we have naloxone hydrochloride and I'm pretty sure I looked 
Uh, we don't have any Narcans in this list because uh, we have transformed anything that comes as Narcan to naloxone. But we obviously have some additional work we could do on some other things. Uh, so I'm going to hit OK. Um, and what's going to happen is uh, we're now going to get an update on administrations of medication based on events. Uh, this is not going to be an indicator of a patient may have received naloxone multiple times. Um, so you notice our numbers dropped down significantly to um, 167,000. And so this is um, truly just saying of the 911 responses, these are how many, um, in essence, patients received naloxone. So what I'm going to do um, is I'm, we have some patient demographic information. We have patient age, we have patient gender, race, um, ethnicity. We get pretty good data um, based on patient age and patient gender. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going, and you'll notice that there's this tower uh, and there's the pyramid again. If I click on the pyramid, so anytime there's a pyramid, it means there's two things. Uh, uh, the tower is an indication that there's only one. I'm going to start off by just choosing a patient age group, and I'm doing that because our the patient age um, we get age we get age and age units at Nemesis, uh, and so this less than one year, for example, will be in there as one day, three days, seven weeks, you know, nine months, so on and so forth. Um, but you'll notice that we do have an indicator that, you know, 160 of these patients uh, were less than one year that received a naloxone administration. Um, so this is kind of interesting when you start looking at the demographics of the patients that may have received naloxone administration. So this is on a national level. I can um, I can add um, gender to this, and I'm I'm going to do that. And let me show you what I'm going to do. I am going to um, do two things as it relates to gender. Well, I'm actually going to pull gender into the columns. Uh, what we're also going to we're going to see male and female and male, and then we're going to see the five not values. Um, this is now populated in the all section. So I have the we have the ability in here. Um, to filter again so that we're only seeing uh, female and male. So every now and again you'll see that we do have what I would kind of consider uh, a poor documentation, right, because we, um, we have the patient age, but I also have not filtered out so that we only have patient contacts, which one hopes the numbers wouldn't change too much if they've indicated a naloxone administration. Uh, but we do have obviously a number of patients where they have not indicated um, the sex or gender of the patient. So I am going to filter um, again. Oops, I needed to put a second check mark in here. Uh, so I'm going to filter in here and just have the uh, males and the females. And so we'll, these will drop off. And so now we can see um, just kind of the, the breakdown. And I can I could have selected the all option so that we could have seen uh, the, the general counts, but um, it may not be surprising to anyone that we are seeing more males um, that have had naloxone administration um, than females. So this is the national data. Now, before I add a state in, I'm going to do one other thing. Many of you may recall, we, I, I talked about um, there's this medication measures up at the top. So, right, so we have event measures, and then we have medication measures and procedure measures. This, right, so this is saying there are 41 patients that were female and under the age of one year that received naloxone in 2015. If I um, open up medication measures and get count of medications given uh, and click the checkbox, what's going to happen is this is going to go to the right of both the female uh, um, and the male. And so 
the difference between 41 and 45 is four. Uh, so what this means is naloxone was administered an additional four times to at least one patient that was under the age of one, whereas in the male population of under age one, there were 79 patients uh, and, rough, and there were 15 additional administrations of, um, of that naloxone. Uh, and, you know, in this case, it, you know, we don't know if it was, you know, the same patient given the administration um, more times or not. But this is, um, but this is what this count of medications or medication measure is, and the same thing applies for procedure measures. And so one would be able to get at least an idea of, of how many more times a, a second administration of a certain um, medication was provided. Um, but just this view right here, we have no way of knowing um, if one patient received it uh, just a second dose or a third dose and so on. Questions um, as it relates to that, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of um, count of medications and I'm now going to pull Utah into the mix. All right. Within the Nemesis Cube, towards the bottom, there is a folder uh, that says state specific information. Within this state specific information, the only people who can access this information is a state EMS representative, and they can only see their own data. Um, so you'd, they'd be able to look and see the patient's home zip code. Um, and let me just show you in here that what we see is a zip code area, um, and what this is is a three digit zip code. Uh, whereas the patient zip code, this one here, um, this one would give uh, a five-digit number um, so that if you're using this yourselves, you would understand what that is about. So I'm just going to show you two things. So number one, if, if I, um, I can pull, and so you as a state, um, individually, the easiest thing for you would be to, um, I'm going to filter first. <clears throat> so if I only wanted to see Utah, I wouldn't have to put a second check mark in here. I could just, um, and typically what you will see is all as a state, and then you'll see your own state. I see all and obviously everybody. So I, So what I'm going to do is I am going to just select Utah, and this is how you would automatically change your view of data to be so that you could query our system and limit it immediately to just your data. But if you want to do a national comparison, I'm going to put a second check mark in here, um, and you'll notice that we're getting back to seeing all of the data. But if I want to compare myself as a state, right? So let's say I am Utah, and I want to um, compare myself to the nation, I have to click the All button. Um, and then again, you would only see your own state. And I'm going to click, click UT for Utah. Um, and then what's going to happen here is, if I had done this right, um, I'm going to put submitting state um, off to the, as a filter. All right, so now, um, and there's a couple different ways I, I could um, make this happen. So right now this is saying here's the nation um, and here's Utah for the females. I can actually, um, down in this column section, I can flip-flop the order. And now this is saying this is the nation's results and this is Utah's results. Um, we also have a percentage icon that's up here. Let's see how this works for me. I'm just going to hit old percentage, and we should now get a percentage uh, in here. So this percentage is the percentage of females. It's not percentage of the total count. Uh, this is just saying the percentage of the females 
for the nation. And so if you wanted to compare yourself, you have to know exactly what it is you've, you've queried. Uh, but you could say, all right, so here's Utah. I want to know how many female patients I have uh, in comparison to the nation. So I could also uh, get rid of the count of events and only do a percentage, which is a much cleaner comparison. Uh, and it also helps so you don't have to do the math yourself. Uh, but, we'll, but you'll notice here that um, at least in the 30 to 39-year-old category, Utah has higher numbers um, in the 30 to 39-year-old and 40 to 49-year-old uh, than the rest of the nation, a little lower uh, for the 50 to 59-year-olds, and so on. So this is how you as a state can compare yourself. And then you can export these data. So we, um, there's a floppy disk icon. Um, so if you click on the floppy disk, you, could, you can export this as a PDF. Uh, so let me show you how this works. You can say you want to show filters. Um, I want to see this as a landscape. You can change um, the font size. I'm actually going to increase it to 14. Let's um, see what this looks like. So it's exporting somewhere over the rainbow. There it is. Uh, for me, um, in Excel right now, it op opened up at the bottom of the page. Um, so here's um, so here's the results, and it's including the filters. So it's telling me uh, type of service requested, calendar year, and my medication, uh, females and males. And I'm looking all would be the nation um, and Utah. So then you can print this, save this for your records, uh, and you know. I do recommend that if you do something like this that you add for yourself an identifier uh, for the um, date that you did something like this. Um, I'm going to minimize this for the moment and say that, show that you can also um, export this in Excel. And that one popped up immediately. So I'm going to open this. Uh, and this is what it looks like uh, if it comes over in Excel. Um, the power of exporting to Excel, of course, um, is that you can make some additional modifications. You can create some reports if you only wanted to look at uh, females. You can do that if you wanted to um, total everything um, and then say, well, of all of the patients, the females were X, right? So then you'd have to uh, change your, you could change the percentages uh, so you can have your total count uh, in here as well. Um, the other thing is, and I'm sure it's going to look pretty nasty if I try to do this, so I'm at least going to get rid of my percent. Um, I'm going to get rid of the counts, um, and then I can add them back in. So what I'm going to do, as you see here, is the cube is just updated, uh, so it got rid of the counts. Um, so now I have the nation, and I have Utah. We it also has some graphing capabilities, so just as Excel does. Um, so I can choose this chart over here to the left um, and say I want to create a, um, we probably want a, let's do a, let's see what a 2D bar chart looks like. And I have a couple of options that I can do. I can hit apply or I can hit OK. If I hit Apply, I can actually kind of move this off to the side. Uh, so I'm actually moving this into my other screen. Um, and so here I'm able to see what the results are. Of, and, for, and right now it's showing, appears as if it's only showing Utah. So obviously if I wanted to do a comparison, I'd have to change. Um, and so let's see. I'm going to change this to a dual access, hit apply again, and see how this changed. Okay, so this is not changing it to anything I want. So I would correct it again and say, let's do a line bar chart. And so at least the view is a little better there, but I'm still seeing um, only 
uh, Utah in here instead of what I would have preferred, which would have been being able to see both. Um, what I'm going to do is there's also an options in here. Uh, there's a couple of tabs so that you as a state, if you want to be able, if you had zip code data, um, it would show some information in, in Google Maps for you. Um, I am going to, where is my, let's see if I try it this way. Um, we have a little box over here that says you can flip-flop your axes. Let's see if it will do it for me. All right. I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to say no chart. And I'm going to flip-flop my axes so that the data is appearing over here like this. Let's see if a chart works for me now. Let's say apply. Nope, it's still only giving me my Utah values. So anyway, that's when I would use Excel, right? So it would actually, you know, um, <laughs> give me some more information. Um, but you, if you have a chart that works for you, especially if you um, may not want to compare it to um, to the nation, I'm going to switch my axes back again. Um, you can also, um, so for example, I am going to go in here and um, I'm going to get rid of Utah. Just keep the male and the female uh, by gender. And if I want to, again, have some type of, of chart. Um, so we'll do a horizontal chart this time. I'm going to say OK. It's going to load. Uh, if I wanted to export this, um, I could um, export it in PDF with uh, it should give me, so it's pulling um, the data and it's pulling it as the graph in here. So now it's, uh, it's giving me the data results um, as well as the graph as well. So if that's something um, you're interested, you can do that as well. I'm going to remove that chart for now. Um, so obviously, in this query, we have 911 response scene, a calendar year, uh, limiting the medications, looking at patient gender. I added um, uh, groupings in 10-year categories of the patient ages. Uh, submitting state right now, it's it is the entire nation. But if I now wanted to say, well, you know what, I want to drill down further, and I want to look um, at the age group of 50 to 59. And because I want to be able to say, well, what's the, what was the uh, complaint reported to dispatch? And what was the provider impression of the patient um, or the, the symptoms? And was the patient treated and transported by EMS? If you want to drill down in a specific category, you can con uh, continue to filter. Uh, to take a look at that information. Um, and then you, again, would be able to say, okay, I want to compare the nation um, to my state to get an idea of what the underlying factors are. But it is now 12 o'clock. Um, I reached my whole hour, which I never have a problem doing. Um, does anybody have any questions, uh, any thoughts on what they um, – potentially would, you know, also like to be able to do. Um, so, for example, if, if you had some, if we were to look and say, you know, it's a poisoning ingestion or uh, identifying some impressions and you, you as, an, um, as a state wanted to look at your agency um, to see what data um, may be missing, quote, unquote, or something like that, uh, you would have the ability to drill down and look at a specific agency uh, for your state. 
to see what that um, what that agency is doing, or if you know a certain uh, incident zip code. So that might be something that you might have a lot of interest in, is knowing where these naloxone administrations are happening. Um, so if you don't have access to that type of data within your own system, uh, you can um, utilize the NEMSIS data that you submit to us uh, to gather some of that information yourselves. So any questions, anything uh, that you'd like to share, any ideas for uh, um, additional training that you would like us to provide? All right, well, hearing none, thanks so much for joining today, and everyone take care, and we'll all be in touch. <laughs>